first cellular function test, you have to uh, make the patient or the subject sit from the side of uh, a bed or a table. Uh, note uh, any kind of uh, 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 tremors, resting tremors, any kind of uh, deviation of the head, any kind of uh, abnormality in the positions of the limb. Uh, they can be resting tremors in cases of uh, severe cellular, cellular uh, dysfunction. They can be deviation that is repetitive movement of uh, the head to one side. Uh, they can be resting tremors. So all this has to be observed in both the limbs, both the upper limbs, both the lower limbs and the head. Uh, once you have uh, done the primary examination or the survey of your subject, where you were looking for the resting tremors, for uh, the normal positions of the limb, as I told you, hypertonia can cause bizarre positions, any movements of the head, any resting tremors. When you have done that, you finally come to uh, the, uh, the head part where you have to examine for uh, the movement of the eyes. Now, how do you do that and what exactly do you instruct your subject or your patient? Uh, you have to observe for nystagmus while the eyes are in the primary position of the gaze. So when you are looking uh, in the subject's eyes, you are the subject to fixate at the primary position of the gaze and then you look for any kind of abnormal movement of nystagmus that can happen uh, in the eye. And then uh, you also have to examine uh, your subject in uh, the six diagnostic uh, positions of the gaze. You have to instruct the patient or the subject well before you do. So you have to uh, look for the movement of the eyes in the six diagnostic positions of the gaze and look for any kind of normal movement or nystagmus that can occur while having your subject do that kind of movement. Now uh, another better method to observe for the nystagmus that can occur because of cerebellar dysfunction is to ask the patient to focus uh, at the primary position of the gaze and alternate between an eccentric position and uh, that can be uh, 45 degrees from the primary position of the gaze and then shift uh, the focus from the center or the primary position to the eccentric position. So while uh, you ask uh, your subject or the patient to focus on the two eccentric or the temporal positions, you look for any kind of overshooting that can happen while the patient is bringing uh, his or her gaze back to the primary position. Now uh, also when you are examining the head, uh, you also have to go for uh, uh, examining the speech in which it's, 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 it's very important for you to uh, properly instruct your subject or your patient to speak certain kind of words that can give you a better idea of where uh, the cerebellar dysfunction is actually manifesting. So, as I said, you will have to talk to the patient. You will have to talk to the patient. You will have to talk to the patient. So you, uh, when, when you are asking uh, your subject to make uh, that kind of noise, you are actually looking for any cerebellar dysfunction, the expiratory muscles in the vocal cord. So when your subject did that, you know that the uh, tongue muscles do not have any kind of uh, cerebellar dysfunction when uh, the vocal cord and the expi expiratory muscles are fixated. And the next one, you shift your focus uh, on the lips. You ask the patient to uh, speak uh, repetitively. So you can see uh, you were looking for the repetitive uh, movements in the lips. Uh, that can uh, show you that if a patient is suffering from any kind of cerebellar dysfunction, the severity of it can be manifested in uh, difficulty in doing that kind of movement either in the tongue or in uh, the lip movement or in the expiration where the expiratory muscles and the vocal cords are affected. 
Right, so uh, moving on to the examination of uh, cerebellar motor functions in the upper extremity. Uh, as an examiner, you have to be well aware of uh, the different kind of uh, manifestations that a cerebellar dysfunction can uh, be, uh, cause in uh, a subject or a patient. And accordingly, the examiner has to uh, plan the, the examination. Starting uh, with tone, uh, before you uh, touch your patient, you have to use uh, the sanitizer. The examination of the upper extremity for any kind of cerebellar dysfunction starts with the examination of muscle tone and as was discussed earlier in the last session, uh, the muscle tone is any kind of uh, resistance that is felt by the examiner at the joints when there is a passive muscle movement. So you start the examination of the upper limb by assessing the muscle tone of your subject or your patient. You have to hold uh, the uh, subject's joint and do any to ask your patient to first leave uh, the extremity flabby, you have to loose hold nahi hai. and hold the joint, the elbow and the wrist and try to make as many movement as is possible, right and left movement, flexion, extension and see if there is any kind of uh, resistance that is being felt at the joints. Similarly, you go about at the wrist joint and see for any kind of resistance that can indicate uh, muscle hypertonia. Now this is how you examine the muscle tone when you're doing passive, when you're asking the uh, subject to uh, leave the uh, hand or the extremity flabby and you're trying to do the movement that is the passive uh, movement of the limbs. Uh, remember when you are trying to look for any kind of postural tremor in the upper extremities, you also have to instruct your subject or your patient to keep his or her eyes, uh, his or her eyes closed. Uh, now, uh, after examining the tone, you have to shift your attention towards examining any kind of postural tremor or wavering of uh, uh, the upper extremity and you have to instruct the patient carefully when you are trying to do this kind of test. Have uh, your hands flexed, extend your hands flexed, okay? I will tap your hands here. आपको नॉर्मल पोजीशन में लाने की कोशिश करनी है। आईज़ अगर अपनी क्लोज रख लीजिए। नाउ व्हेन द आईज़ अगर क्लोज, यू हैव टू फर्स्ट अगेन लुक फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ़ ट्रेमर्स दैट कैन बी हैपनिंग इन द अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी। इन दिस केस पीस टू बी नॉर्मल। नाउ दिस इज़ हाउ यू लुक फॉर एनी का� in this case, when you're trying to tap on uh, the limbs proximally, uh, uh, you know uh, that the patient has brought his or her limb to uh, the normal position. But in case of cerebellar dysfunction, this limb, after being tapped, would not come to the normal position and uh, shoot off and then again shoot down and shoot off and this would result in a wavering motion for some time and then it would eventually come to the normal position. So this is how you were going to look for any kind of postural tremor and uh, uh, wavering of uh, the upper extremity in case of uh, cerebellar dysfunction. When you're going to examine for the rebound phenomena, again this has to be uh, done very carefully and the patient has to be instructed uh, well before this. I hands you will place your hand on the subject's shoulder in such a manner that when in case of cere cerebellar dysfunction, if at all there is overshooting uh, in the rebound phenomena, then the patient does not his, uh, hit his or her face. So you are going, going to try, uh, fa uh, place your right hand or uh, right hand on the shoulders uh, of uh, the right shoulders of your subject this would stop the subject from hitting his or her face when there is uh, cerebellar dysfunction 
Now you hold the wrist, the right wrist of the patient with your left hand and you ask your subject to try to flex the hands towards his or her chest. Eyes, again the eyes has to be closed. So you saw that the hands had stopped in this position in case of any cerebellar dysfunction or in presence of rebound phenomena there would have been overshooting of the hands which would have eventually resulted in hitting the examiner's uh, uh, arms. Now uh, this was how you assess for rebound phenomena. We come to assessing the coordination uh, which is done in the upper limbs, upper extremities by the finger nose test and uh, alternating uh, 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 wrist, uh, palm and uh, uh, distal part of the hand movements. Um, finger nose test, we did it uh, last time, we will demonstrate it again. Uh, instruct your patients to uh, follow uh, the tip of his or her nose and the tip of the examiner's uh, finger simultaneously. You keep your finger on your nose and you keep your nose on your nose and you keep your nose on your nose. I will move my hand accordingly and adjust your hand. This was the finger nose test that looks for coordination in the upper extremities. Another test that looks for the alternating movements is when you ask the patient to do alternating movement at his or her palms. आपको ये वाला movement चलिए भी करना है. Speed up. So you ask the patient to speed speed up and look for any kind of irregularity in this movement. In case of cerebellar dysfunction, the alternating movement wouldn't be repetitive. The, 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 the second variant of uh, this test, the similar test, is trying to pat the thighs with your palm and do the alternative movement similarly here. This is how you look for uh, alternating movements and coordination in the upper extremities. Now we'll uh, shift our attention towards the cerebellar motor function examinations in the lower extremity. Again, the general exam examination included the examination of the normal uh, uh, posture of the lower limbs and looking for any kind of hypertonia, any kind of resting tremor that can occur in the lower limbs that was done in the general examination uh, previously. Now, uh, we, we examine the cere cerebellar dysfunction in the lower extremity by looking at uh, the position of the subject or the patient when uh, he's standing. In case of any cerebellar dysfunction, the patient cannot maintain a normal posture and sometimes even needs uh, support to stand or sways towards the side of, side of the lesion. As you can see, the posture is maintained, there is no deviation, there is no waving uh, of the subject that indicates normal cerebellar uh, functions. You also have to ask the patient to uh, demonstrate uh, his or her gait by doing the usual kind of work that the subject does and look for any rolling or lurching or staggering gait that can uh, occur in cases of uh, cerebellar dysfunction. Instruct your patient to uh, do a normal walk after having done a normal uh, stand, the way in the patient stands. So you've done that, I will ask the patient or instruct the patient to do a usual walk. So when you are asking uh, the subject to do the, the usual walk, you are looking for the movement of the hands in accordance with the movement of the lower extremity. You are looking for any kind of again rolling or lurching or staggering movement that can uh, happen in the gait. In this case, we saw the patient, uh, the subject uh, walk normally and came back and there was no such uh, difficulty in doing a usual walk. Uh, we have a more sensitive uh, test to, to uh, examine the gait that is uh, known as the heel to toe examination where you ask the patient 
to place uh, the heel of uh, one leg or one feet in front of the toe of the other feet and try to walk in a straight line. This is a more sensitive test and in case of cerebellar dysfunction it is difficult for a patient to do this kind of tandem walking or in severe cases the patient may even fall towards the side of the lesion or may not uh, kind of walk on a straight line. Instruct your patient to ask for अपने एक दो के आगे दूसरी नींद एंड राइट में बोल थोड़ा तेज से लिए सो एस यू कैन सी द पेशेंट द सब्जेक्ट इज वेल एबल टू मेंटेन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन व्हाइल डूइंग द सी टू टू अ टैन एंड वॉकिंग दिस इज हाउ यू एग्जामिन गेट द लास्ट ट्रेन दैट यू एग्जामिन इन द लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी इज अगेन द कोऑर्डिनेटेड मूवमेंट the equivalent of finger nose test uh, in uh, the lower extremities is the heel shin test where you ask the subject to uh, place his or her uh, um, one knee on uh, his or her one uh, knee uh, toe on uh, the shin or the knee of the other leg and try to move it towards uh, the shin towards the ankle joint so half uh, Uh, the heel she shin test as i told you the equivalent of finger nose test in the up, uh, lower extremity is uh, done by asking the subject to place uh, the uh, heel of one leg on the knee joint and try to move it across the length of the shin aap ye wala apna toe knee joint pe rakhiye and isko shin ke long move karna hai aapko यही चीज दूसरे वाले में रिपीट कीजिए एज यू कैन सी द सब्जेक्ट इज एबल टू मेंटेन अ नॉर्मल मूवमेंट अक्रॉस द शिन इन केस ऑफ सेरेबुलर डिसफंक्शन देर इज सोइंग अवे ऑफ द टो फ्रॉम द लेंथ ऑफ द शिन तो दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट सेरेबुलर मोटर फंक्शन एग्जामिनेशन द टेस्ट वॉज परफॉर्म विद गुड हाइजीन and uh, we'd also like to thank uh, dr kanchan for uh, being a part of uh, this examination thank you dr thank you